Hi, this is a tutorial on making Arduino Morse code transmitter. It introduces useful device which is keyboard alternative for entering text into Arduino project. I have a light version of this video if you want to skip all the tech talk, but if you want as much technical details as possible, you're in the right place. Let's jump into it. In this project, we would need the following components Arduino Nano, OLED display, a buzzer, a LilyPad LED, two push buttons, and two 1K resistors. Here are schematics for this project. As usual, we start by connecting Arduino ground and 5 volts to breadboard. Then we connect ground and 5 volts uh, of the display. The display clock and data pins go to Arduino analog pins 4 and 5. Then two push buttons are connected to 5 volts and to digital pins 2 and 3. Both buttons are connected to ground via pull-up resistors. Buzzer and LED are connected to digital pins 5 and 4. Potentiometer is connected to pin A1. Here is an explanation how the text input tool works. Let's look at the example where we have four letters. When the letters are displayed on OLED display, to highlight any particular letter we draw inverse rectangular around the letter. Invert option is similar to photo negative. First, we draw inverse rectangular in XY coordinates that would highlight letter A. When we want to select highlight next letter, we draw an inverse rectangular in the position corresponding to that letter. We also draw inverse rectangular in the old spot, which would de-highlight previously selected letter. This way we can go through all four letters. To highlight letter on the screen, we wrote a custom function. We pass to the function position of the newly selected letter, as well as the position of the previously selected letter. When I say position, I refer to the letter position in the string containing all letters from A to Z. Based on the position, we calculate XY coordinates of the letter on the letter board on OLED display. We do it first for the newly selected letter, and when done, we draw inverse rectangular in the new position. Then we calculate XY coordinates for the previously selected letter, and there we also draw inverse rectangular. Since the letter was highlighted, drawing inverse rectangular again would de-highlight it. Let's have a look how this would look like on an OLED display. The OLED display I'm using is a two-color one. Small part of the display lit in yellow, while the rest of the display lit in blue. This is perfect display for this project, while at the same time it was a nuisance for other projects, like an analog lock project I did a while ago. All letters are displayed in 9 columns and 3 rows. We draw yellow panel at the top of the display. This is where 
we will display the text to transmit in Morse code. We also write an inversed rectangular to highlight letter A. Then we select the next letter and so on. And you can see inverse rectangulars being drawn, highlighting different letters each time. We have an option of displaying two sizes of fonts in yellow panel. We use smaller one if we want to transit longer messages. We can finally move to Morse code part of this video. Here is the table showing Morse code representations of each letter. And here is how this is reflected in the code. I wrote two functions. Let's start with the most basic one that outputs dots and dashes. The Morse code will be transmitted in two ways. With light signals, for this we have LED connected to digital pin 4 and sound signals with the use of the buzzer connected to pin 5. In Morse code we have two types of signals. Dot, which in case of our project would be a signal 100 milliseconds in length and dash which should be as long as three dots, meaning 300 milliseconds. Break in between each signal should be 100 milliseconds. If we pass a dot to a function, it writes high signal to pins 4 and 5, which results with LED lighting up and buzzer emitting sound. After waiting for 100 milliseconds, we write low signal to those pins, switching LED and buzzer off. We wait for additional 100 milliseconds, making required break before next signal is played. Same when we send the dash with the only difference that we wait 300 milliseconds before turning LED and buzzer off. The next function is for displaying signals belonging to a single letter. We pass the letter to this function and it scans Morse code table to find this letter and its corresponding Morse code signals. Before the scan is performed, which we check if the received character is not a space. If it is, that means that we start a new word. In Morse code, the break in between words should be as long as 5 dots, meaning 500 milliseconds. You can see that we wait 400 milliseconds, but this adds up to a 100 milliseconds pause after the last signal played, 500 milliseconds in total. When we find the right letter in the Morse code table, we go through cells for that letter and execute play.dash function for each one. When done, we wait for 200 milliseconds, which plus a pause after the last signal played makes required 300 milliseconds. Now a few words about programming the push buttons. The first one is connected to the digital pin 2. We have an interrupt defined, which executes function add to string when the signal on digital pin 2 goes from high to low. In that function, we do only one thing, change the value of a letter entered variable from 0 to 1. This variable is a flag that shows us if the button was pressed, and we check for that flag in loop function. The second button is connected to digital pin 3, and here the interrupt executes function trigger transmit to set the flag transmit to 1. Now let's look at adding selected letter to transmitted text. Text to transmit is kept in the transit string variable. With potentiometer we choose the character and press the button. In the interrupt function the flag is set. When letter entered flag is detected we are taking the letter at the selected position and we add it to string held in the to transit variable. We increase the variable storing the length of that string by 1 and then we display the whole string on the transmission panel. The letter entered flag is reset back to 0. Now let's look at triggering Morse code transmission. When the other button is pressed, transmit variable is set to 1. In loop function this is detected and we loop through each character of the two transit string executing play letter function for each character. When done, transmit variable is set back to zero and will change only when the button is pressed again for the next transmission. Let's have a look at the end-to-end -end process. First we select the word to transmit, selecting it one letter at a time. After positioning on each letter, we press the button to send it to a transmit panel. When we are ready, we press the other button and the transmission starts. Sounds legit, 
but I wanted to make sure the Morse code decoders out there will be able to decode my signal. I found a nice tool in the web that allows to either import a sound file or just listens for the transmitted sounds. It has a bunch of parameters to tweak. Let's put it to a test. Perfect! Initially I could not make it work, but later I discovered there was a problem with echo in my living room. When I took it outside, it works every time. Okay, so the Morse code transmitter is just a fun project, but I think the device I used to enter the transmitted text is very handy and can be used in all variety of projects. If you think the same way and you like this video, I guess there is only one thing you can do. See you next time.